The On Farm Network started investigating soybean row spacings in 2019 with interested farmers. Today, we'll go over some of those results. First, though, I'd like to open with some of the small plot research results from Manitoba. This research was conducted over three years and at eight sites, investigating narrow rows versus intermediate slash wide rows. First of all, from the small plot research, here along the bottom are plant stands at each location over those three years, comparing narrow in dark blue and wider rows in light blue. What's interesting from this is that plant stands in this research were actually lower in wider rows than in narrow rows. Both row widths were seeded at the same rate, but on average at half of the sites tested, established plant stands were actually lower in the wider rows. And the thought here is that there might have been a bit more competition among plants within the row since they're so much closer together in the row with wider row widths. But what did that mean for yield? At sites comparing 10 inches to 27 inches or wider, yield was increased 86% of the time by planting at narrower rows. At sites comparing narrow to more intermediate rows of 16 to 24 inches, there was no yield difference 85% of the time. These yield increases did range anywhere from 1.5 to 11.5 bushels per acre at the significant sites. So what's interesting is with a true narrow versus wide row comparison, we can expect to see that yield difference. That's what this is telling us. When the row width differences aren't as large, comparing a narrow to a more intermediate row width, the yield response isn't something that we see as often. So with that brief introduction, that takes us into exploring these row spacings on farm at the field scale level using actual equipment in the field. What we're trying to answer with these trials is does row spacing affect soybean yield? Does it change how quickly the canopy closes? Will we see that benefit towards improved weed control? Those kinds of things. So over the last four years, we have hosted 19 trials in the on-farm network comparing different row widths on-farm. There have been nine trials testing narrow rows of seven and a half to 10 inches versus intermediate row widths of 15 to 20 inches. And there have been 10 trials testing intermediate 15 inch rows versus wider 30 inch rows. Seeding rates were the same for both row spacings and they were otherwise managed the same. A Little bit of background information. In the trials testing narrow versus intermediate rows, on average seeding rates were about 183,000 seeds per acre and the average plant stand established in the field was about 147,000 plants per acre. For the 15 inch versus 30 inch trials, average seeding rates were lower, 163,000 seeds per acre, and living plant stands established were just shy of 130,000 plants per acre in these trials. So we do evaluate plant stands in these trials by taking plant counts. We're counting 10 feet of two rows in each strip at two different spots. And we're doing that both during the early season and the later season before harvest, just to see how that plant stand is changing throughout the year. So the first question I had after looking at small plot research results were, at the field scale, are these plant stands lower with wider row spacings? So each trial is using the farmer's typical seeding rate, and each farm is using a different seeding rate. So for these trials, I've calculated percent survivability, which is what's shown here. Here along the bottom of the graph is the number of trials that's contributing to each of those bars. So that's where those averages are coming from. What's interesting is that wide rows have had a disadvantage. On average, survivability, both during vegetative stages and reproductive growth stages, was 7% lower in 30 inch rows than the 15 inch row spacings. And this occurred at seven out of 10 trials where the 15s and 30s were compared. So why might that be? If we look beneath the canopy in these, you can see just how much more clustered together plants are within the 30 inch row. The thought is that there might be some extra plant to plant competition in these wider rows. And this is gonna lead to more shade avoidance characteristics. And those are things like thinner stems and less branches as the plants are trying to grow to avoid each other. The hope is that this would also lead to higher pod heights, but that's not always really the case. And then as those rows narrow further, we do have more branching as plants grow in to fill in that extra space within the row. You can see that hopefully in these two photos where we've got a few more branches popping up per stem in the seven and a half inch row than when we're looking at the 15 inch rows closer up. In these trials, we also evaluate canopy closure or percent ground cover. So we do this using a Canopio app 
So what you do is you take a picture and the app is converting it to green versus bare ground. That's what's shown in these black and white images, that assessment, and it's giving us the percent of ground cover. So we assess the canopy closure during early flower, early potting, and at seed fill stages. And the expectation is that as narrow rows uh, will close earlier and be more effective at shading out any late emerging weeds. And the data is supporting that expectation. So these three graphs are from the three years where we have canopy closure data from these trials. Along the bottom are the different row spacings tested in each year. And the lines are the percent canopy closure, percent ground cover. And flowering is in blue, potting is in orange, and then seed fill stages are in gray. Generally, narrow rows covered more ground and the rows closed faster. In 2022, there were only three trials. So this 30 inch row spot where it's got more canopy closure earlier in the season, that's a little misleading just because it's not actually an average, it's just at that one field that had more row closure compared to the average of the seven and a half and the 15 inches. It's skewing things a little bit. In 2021, with the drought, plant growth was quite reduced and the rows never actually fully closed, especially in our 30 inch rows. Otherwise though, all rows closed by seed fill. And I count row closure anything that's kind of above 85% because if we looked at those images on the last slide, some shadows and stuff can kind of skew your total percent cover just because it's reading a shadow as a bare ground instead of actually plant material. So that's why I'm using kind of 85% as that line to say rows close. But otherwise, narrow rows did close earlier and more often, quite a bit earlier, depending on the growing season. So narrow rows were closed by early flower in 2020 and by potting stages in 2022. The exception being that drought year where plant growth was reduced. But what did that mean for yield? So on the left side of this are the narrow versus intermediate row widths, both seven and a half versus 15s and the tens versus 20. And then on the right are the 15 versus 30 or intermediate versus wide rows. So at that narrow versus intermediate, we've had four significant yield responses. They're the ones starred and highlighted in bold. And then comparing 15s to 30s, there have been two significant yield responses. But to summarize what this means, Narrow rows provided a yield benefit over the intermediate row widths 44% of the time, improving yield by just under two bushels an acre. And then intermediate rows of 15 inches provided a yield benefit over 30 inch rows 20% of the time, improving yield by just over two bushels an acre. We can't really quantify the economics of these trials more broadly since how you're achieving changes in row spacing is gonna be very farm specific and specific to the equipment available to you. But in summary, what we're finding with these trials so far is that plant establishment has been lower with wider row spacings, likely due to a bit more competition within the row. Those narrow rows do tend to close faster, which means a more competitive crop, which is going to mean a lot in the long run in terms of weed management. And on the whole, soybean yield was increased by narrowing up the row width a third of the time, on average improving yield by about two bushels per acre. So if you're interested in learning more about these results, every trial has a report contained in this database, which you can find by visiting manitobapulse.ca or by following this QR code here. If you're interested in participating in these trials, reach out to Ian, our on-farm network technical specialist. Thanks for your time today. I've been Laura, MPSG's Western Agronomist. To stay up to date on research results like these, do feel free to follow us on social media.